Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. We continue our focus on the state of the nation. And this morning, we're joined by Chief Femi Fani the former Minister of Aviation. He joins us from Abuja. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today, Chief. Now, uh, we'll start off with your publication. And uh, this kind of received wider circulation than the previous one. But then, why did you choose to speak of now, especially when it has to do with the fight against terrorism, where some people have said to themselves, okay, I'll wait till January, and then I'll get a picture of what exactly transpired, especially after that December deadline, then I'll speak up. Well, well, we're just a few days away from January, from January, and I think that it's important for us to speak up at the right and appropriate time and I don't think it's appropriate for people to tell other people when to speak. Uh, people are dying daily in this country. Uh, a government has given a commitment uh, to do certain things. They haven't met those commitments. Instead of coming clean and telling us the truth, they keep telling us lies. And I think it's appropriate for every true patriot and every good citizen to stand up and speak the truth uh, as, as soon as possible and as soon as they believe it's appropriate. You know, when you talk about the truth, a lot of uh, Nigerians uh, will wonder what you call the truth. Because uh, that particular letter, I've been trying to count the paragraphs, uh, quite uh, a lengthy one. Uh, it touched on so many areas. What truth were you trying to bring uh, to the fore that uh, this particular government ha hasn't seen as the truth? Well, there are, let's start with the untruths, if you like, or the lies. Uh, the president uh, and our government came out and said a few days ago that no arms were bought by the previous administration. This is a lie. It's not true. And if no arms were bought, I wonder how the previous government could have recovered 22 local government areas uh, in the space of a few months. Uh, so clearly arms were bought and arms were used. So the idea that no arms were bought is a lie. That's the first untruth. The second untruth is the fact that they said a few days ago that the war against Boko Haram had been won. This is another lie. The war hasn't been won. People are being killed every day. They said the war had been won on the 23rd. On the 25th, people were killed in Maiduguri. On the 27th, people were killed in Borno State. On the 28th, people were killed in Adamawa. And as I speak to you today, of the 22 local government areas that were recovered by the Jonathan administration, a number of them are back in the hands of Boko Haram today. So it's simply not true that the war against Boko Haram um, has been won. Now, instead of being consistent and clear in his assertions, what the president also did was to um, now come out and say that arms were indeed bought, but they were bought with cash. And he spoke as if he didn't understand or appreciate why arms had to be bought with cash. Let me take this opportunity to remind him and Nigerians. At the time that Jonathan was in power, there was an arms embargo on this country. We could not prosecute the war against Boko Haram because nobody was prepared to sell us arms. The Americans took that position, the we their Western allies took that position, and virtually everybody else in the, in the world. Therefore, we had to procure arms on the black market and the only way you can do that is by using cash. And I think the position of our government at the time was that no matter what it takes, whether it's cash, check, or bank transfer, the important thing was to get the arms for our boys to fight on the front. They did this, they prosecuted the war effectively, and by the time the election took place, Boko Haram was virtually non-existent anywhere in the country apart from in Sambisa Forest. These are the facts, um, and, and this is what happened at the time. So for them to come around and say no arms were bought, or for them to say that arms were bought with cash, uh, as if there was anything wrong with that, given the circumstances, I think does a great disservice um, uh, to this government, to the president, and to our nation, and to those that fought the war uh, against Boko Haram and died gallantly fighting on the front. You know, you were a member of the... These are some of, of the, the issues that were raised in the, in the, in the uh, open letter. Chief, Chief Venikayuda, you, you were a member of the last administration. Uh, definitely, you should be speaking from... Uh, a position of uh, knowledge of uh, what uh, was bought and uh, you say arms were actually bought. Uh, tell us exactly what you felt about this particular fight, uh, especially within that space that elections were postponed and uh, the re relative success uh, that was uh, experienced at that time. Uh, is it as a result of the arms you're talking about that were bought at that point in time or 
uh, a change in strategy by the Nigerian military at that time? Well, well, it's a little bit of both. First of all, arms were bought. That's the first point. And arms were bought, and it wasn't easy to procure them, but the government sat up and procured them. Before they bought those arms, when we couldn't get arms, Boko Haram took 22 local government areas in the northeastern part of our country, took virtually three quarters of Borno State, took parts of Yobe, took parts of Ad Adamawa, and they were encroaching on Abuja and onto the, um, the north central region, the north central zone, simply because we couldn't procure arms. Our American friends, our British friends, were not prepared to help us. But given the uh, ingenuity of the past administration, they now dug deeper and procured the arms and bought them. They, not just, they didn't just buy the arms, they ensured that our armed forces were in a position to fight the battle and to fight the war in a very, very clinical and systematic manner. And consequently, each local government area that had been taken before was retaken. This was a victory for our troops. By the time the elections took place, we had a major victory against Boko Haram. But of course, since uh, the election was fought and won, everything appears to have been reversed. And that's the concern. Now, I don't think it's, it's helpful to continuously blame the government for the challenges we're facing, facing on the war front. I think it's important for all of us to come together and support the government in the fight against terror, because we're all Nigerians, regardless of what political party you're in. But I think the important thing is for our government to lead from the front, speak the truth, tell the people what the challenges are, and stop saying at every point in time that the reason why they are losing the war against terror or losing territory or that people are still being killed every day is because Jonathan didn't do this, Jonathan didn't do that, and that we weren't, we, you know, that the previous government did nothing at all. Nothing could be further from the truth. Well, I, I did. We, just, we did. Before I, just before we move on to something else, let, if, I may just, if I may just add this. Yeah. Um, the, the president um, doesn't seem to, to, to understand that that it is very, very important to carry everybody along in this fight. This is not the time for finger pointing. This is not a time for casting aspersions on people's character. This is a time for all of us to come together as Nigerians and fight this war to ensure that we have a solid victory against Boko Haram. So would you say that your letter is a solidarity letter to the president? <laughs> Well, I, 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 I don't, um, I think I'm speaking as a Nigerian. Uh, I don't think it's a solidarity letter. I think it's a wake-up call. And it, it's, it, it was written uh, with the best of intentions, noble intentions, honorable intentions, to get him to sit up uh, and to support his people, his army, and to tell us the truth. Because you I mean, say, you know, I'm sorry to interrupt there you, There seems Chief. to be... Chief, permit me yeah. to interrupt you. What, what I'm saying is, I mean, you say we should all get up and support the president. We shouldn't politicize, you know, the fight against terrorism. Yes, it would seem that what your letter has done is precisely that. Politicize it. Well, I would disagree with you. I think it's important and incumbent upon every responsible citizen to tell the government where they're going wrong. This has nothing to do with politics. The political aspect, I would say, is this. They politicized it by saying that their failings were caused by the previous administration. I've just given you a whole load of facts. These are incontrovertible. We won territory. They lost territory. We were winning the war. They are losing the war. He said initially, no arms were bought. Then he said, arms were bought with cash. This is what you call doublespeak. He also said, arms? by the way, a few days later, that, that, um, that he would persuade Boko Haram to lay down their arms. Now, if, 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 if he had won the war against terror and Boko Haram had been defeated, why is he still trying to persuade anybody to do anything? And in any case, is persuasion the way to win a war against terror, against what has been described as the most deadly terrorist organization on the planet today by the Global Terror Index? I think, it's, I think we need to sit up, smell the coffee, and understand that we must join hands to encourage our government to do the right thing insist they do the right thing, and where they get it wrong, to condemn them for doing the wrong things and make them sit up. This is what the, uh, democracy is all about, and this is what I think we should continue to do. It's far from politicizing it. You are an irresponsible individual if you sit by and allow things to fall apart and not speak up and speak the truth when it's appropriate and keep the government on its toes. Now, when you say that, you know, you won back all 22 local governments within six weeks, because uh, it would seem that that's how the story that's not, how, yeah. that's not what a lot of Nigerians remember. Yeah. Besides, uh, some people will say that the fight against terrorism is not just about winning back territory. There's also the part of the insurgency. 
do you, are you saying that you know right. everything will be won? Is it really possible to win the fight against terrorism in that re regard, especially when it well, has to do let with me insurgency? Refresh, let me refresh your memory. Um, and I'm saying that if Nigerians or some Nigerians don't know, I would like to refresh their memories because it's all very well because a lot of people appear to have short memories now. The fact of the matter is, at the time of the election, that is the, 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 the time the election was conducted, the previous administration had recovered every single local government area that had been previously taken by Boko Haram um, um, you know, back from them. We had, we had regained our territory. That is a fact, whether like anybody likes to accept it or not. The other fact, which I'd like to remind you and Nigerians of, is this, that Initially, two, three years ago, Boko Haram was bombing in, in Abuja, bombing in Kaduna, bombing in Kanu, bombing all over the north central area. The only place they weren't bombing um, uh, was in the south, even though they tried to do that, but luckily they didn't succeed. By the, time, by the time the previous government got down to it, bombings in Abuja and the north central, Kaduna, Kanu, and so on and so forth, had stopped. And the war had been pushed into the northeast and systematically Inch by inch, mile by mile, our army took back the northeast from Boko Haram and pushed them into Sambiza Forest. These are the facts. And I don't think that we should run away from those facts. The fact that we are not uh, in a position to say that today doesn't mean to say we didn't achieve it yesterday. And by the way, let me also clarify this. I was not a member of the previous administration. I was a spokesman uh, of the campaign organization for the previous administration, and I'm very proud of that. And I was a member of the PDP, and I still am, and I'm a, a very good friend of the administration, but I certainly wasn't a member of that administration. But I am one of those that admire what they managed to do in the closing weeks before the election. And I think we should, we should always remember that. Well, some people will say that Sambisa, which you say was an exception, is also a part of the country. So when you say that they claim back everywhere apart from Sambisa <laughs> forest, it's a part of Nigerian territory. Aside that, uh, there is well, also like, the like question... I, like, like I said, the exception is, like I said, the exception is Sambisa. That's why I said except for. Very much part of the country. And uh, there are reasons why that wasn't taken. But let, let, let's give them nine out of ten. I mean, let's not get fixated about what happened in the past. Let's talk about what's happening now. The double speak, the deceit, the lies, the government by propaganda, and so on and so forth. Chief, and by the to, way, the violation of civil liberties, and so on yeah. and so forth. Uh, Chief, because uh, the reason I bring back Sambisa sure. is because Sambisa is happening in the now. We understand that Sambisa uh, has been cleared by the territory. That, that is, that's what the military said. They've cleared Sambisa forest. But away from that, you say that cash was bought on the black market that. with raw cash. I'm, Think about the arms was bought on the black market with raw cash. Um, one would have to ask, were all the arms, talking about uh, tanks, guns, were everything bought with raw cash? Well, first of all, uh, let me just say, let me just put a lie to what you've just said now, or what you say the military. It is not true that San Pisa Forest has been retaken by the military. They may say that, one or two of them may say that, but that is not true. I wish it were. I'm a great supporter and a great friend of the military. I'm consistent on that, and I wish them well. But unfortunately, that hasn't happened, and other local government areas in Nigeria has been taken by Boko Haram. Um, but on the issue of procurement of arms, you'd have to put those questions to those that were in the business of buying arms, the, maybe officers of the previous government and so on and so forth. But what I do know, the little I know, and I said it at the time, if you remember, I was on this program, was that it, is in, it was impossible for us to buy arms from anywhere in the world at the time. Our hands had effectively been tied by, by some of our closest allies, ironically, including the government of the Minister of Defense of the United Kingdom that the president hosted the other day. As a consequence of that arms embargo, many of our soldiers and our civilians were being killed on a daily basis. The previous administration had to dig deep, use their imagination, and procure arms with cash. This is my understanding, this is what happened, and this is what they did. And they bought, you know, very, very sophisticated arms. I mean, it's possible to do that. Well, and they did it, and thankfully they did it, and consequently, they regained territory. So the idea that it never happened is simply not true. Well, yesterday we did speak with the I mean, minister. you know, did... The, it, yeah, we, we did speak with the minister of sorry, information. Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no problem. We, we spoke with the minister yesterday about the same matter in, terms, in the light of those recent attacks. And he said, look, what he says is that 
At the moment, Boko Haram cannot carry out any, in his words, spectacular attacks. You may still have uh, suicide bombers here and there as, you, as an offshoot of how cells operate, but they have completely decimated their capacity to carry out those spectacular attacks while they continue the fight against terrorism. I take real exception to the words of the minister that said, I don't know which minister it was, Information. but I take exception to that. Spectacular attacks, they've put us, what does that mean? On Christmas day, many dozens of our citizens were blown to pieces in, uh, in Borno state. Again, on the 27th of this month, December, more of our citizens were slaughtered in Maiduguri. Again, on the 28th of this month and 29th of this month, more of our citizens were blown to pieces and killed in Adamawa State. How much more spectacular does he want it to be? Nigerians are being slaughtered. People are being killed. These are human beings. Now, I don't glorify that. I don't, I don't, it's, it's not something that I take pleasure in saying. I say it in pain. I say it with pain. And I'm saying that they need to sit up and stop giving themselves themselves a hundred uh, out a hundred percent pass marks and get down to the job, do the work, stop the insurgency, get, uh, gain back our territory, help our military, procure the arms that they need. And by the way, they haven't bought any since they came into power, and 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 and, and make progress in this war. And they need to carry us along by telling us the truth and not to say things like the media is to blame because the media is reporting these things and therefore giving oxygen. Uh, to, to Boko Haram. Nothing could be further from the truth. The media has a duty to tell the truth, tell Nigerians what's going on, and allow them to know how well their government are faring and what our people are going through. And I uh, hope they continue to do uh, that. Uh, but I have a, a question for you, but before that, I, I want to take you back. If you say you were not a member of the last administration, how did you get to know that arms were not bought? Well, how did I get to know that arms were not bought? I said arms were bought, not that they were not. But well, how did you know that arms were bought, I meant to say? But because, because, because I made the necessary research and inquiries, and I spoke to the relevant people, and I saw the evidence of it, because I, I went out of my way to check it out. And that's why I was confident enough to stand up to speak for that administration uh, during the, the presidential campaign. You know, th there's ample evidence. Now, let me just put this to you. If arms were not bought, as we're being made to believe, how on earth could 22 local government areas and the whole of Nigerian territory, all of Nigerian territory, apart from Sabiza Forest, how could it have been taken back in the space of a few months? I mean, did our military use Molotov cocktails, bricks and stones to fight the most sophisticated and the most deadly terrorist organization on the planet? I think not. Let's get real. Arms were bought. Arms were bought with cash. Progress was made. And let's move on from there. Let's you know, talk about you, what's you, going you, on now. You know, and it, I think that the least our government is to be honest with us. Honestly, in moving ahead, but we still have to talk about some of these things you have uh, highlighted. Very quickly here, you're a lawyer, sure. without, without delving into the matter, so that, uh, well, subject is, we're talking about the AMS uh, trial going on. Uh, doesn't it also amaze you that no one has come forward to say X amount of money was used to procure arms, as you have said, that arms were actually bought? Doesn't it worry you? Well, I think I, th I, th I think that you may I think that you may find that when the trial begins, um, you know, that a lot of things will come out that will shock a lot of Nigerians. When the truth begins to unfold, a lot of people will come to understand that number one, it is not true that money that was procured for arms was used for other means. I don't believe that for one minute, even though that's the narrative that's being played out. I don't accept. I don't believe that. And I think it's important to wait to hear what the defense has to say. In all these matters, there are always two and sometimes even three sides to a story. I have absolute confidence uh, in, in the innocence of those that have been accused of wrongdoing. I will not be swayed by media reports. I will not be swayed by the kind of information that's being leaked out to the media by those that wish to prosecute these people. I will wait to hear what they have to say. And I have every reason to believe that evidence will be adduced to show that these things are lies. And by the way, since we're on this issue, let me, let me tell you one of the other concerns that was raised inside that open letter, which I think is appropriate for me to touch on right now. You know, last night, um, Colonel Sambo Dasuki was released uh, from Kujé's prison. He managed to satisfy all his conditions of bail. He was released from the prison. And he, and he was rearrested again. And he was taken back 
to the SSS headquarters, where he is as we speak, uh, and this was completely against the order that was given by the court uh, as part of the terms and conditions of his bail, that under no circumstances should be, he be rearrested and taken anywhere without the permission of the court. And this is a violation of civil liberties. If you want to prosecute somebody for corruption or anything, I believe that it's the right and proper thing to do, and we support that. But for goodness sake, do it within the confines of the law. Stop violating court orders. Stop violating people's civil liberties and human rights. Stop putting out lies about them. Get real. Do your job. And let's see what the truth really is by going to court. I, I know, surely, in the days, to come, in, in, in over the days to come, the government should uh, get a reply to some of these uh, issues raised in that particular letter. You were also concerned about the recent development in Kaduna State. Uh, where you spoke about uh, the issue, the yeah. clash between Shite and the military. Uh, you spoke uh, not quite long ago uh, during a TEDx session where you also chronicled some of these issues uh, of uh, insurgency and uh, militancy with some of the groups. If we were to go with what you spoke uh, during your TEDx talk, don't you think that was why the military moved against uh, this particular group, this Islamic movement in Kaduna? No, no. Yeah, I, I remember the TEDx talk very well, and I would urge those that are listening to go and listen to what I said there. You know, the problem we're having here in this country when it comes to Islamic fundamentalism, and I've done a lot of research on this, is essentially with the uh, Sunni, the extremist Sunni Muslims. That is the Salafists, the Wahhabists, uh, the ISIL, Al-Qaeda type characters who have a complete misunderstanding of Islam and who have used violence as a means to effect their purpose and to effect change. These are Sunni Muslims. These are also purportedly Sunni Muslims. They're not Shia Muslims. In the entire history of this country, we've never had problems in terms of terrorism with the Shia sect or the, what they call Shia Muslims. Um, my fear, and I raise it in the open letter, is that when our military gets up for whatever reason and kills between 500 to 1,000 Shia Muslims, levels their homes, shoots their leaders, um, digs up their burial sites, um, and terrorizes them for whatever reason, um, you uh, stand the danger of waking up a monster which you just don't want to wake up because the Shias have immense support from places like Iran, from groups like Hezbollah, which is another very powerful, one of the most, probably the most powerful militia in the Middle East. It's a Shia group, and you don't want to invite them inadvertently into the Nigerian conflict. Right now, the conflict we have is essentially the state against an extremist Sunni Muslim group. But if you continue to kill Shias in this country and persecute them, you are going to invite disaster because the Shia support groups will come in from Iran, from Hezbollah, and so on and so forth. And this is something that I think, and I think we don't want. And I also think it's absolutely fundamental that where mass murder uh, is, is, is committed by our military or by anybody in this country, I think we should all sit up and condemn it, regardless of what the circumstances were. Mass murder is mass murder. Crimes against humanity are crimes against humanity. And I think it's absolutely absurd and abominable that the government has not come out to condemn what happened on that day, the slaughter of these Nigerians, whether they're Shia Muslims, Christians, or whatever, these are Nigerian people, and they have the right to life, and they, they, nobody has the right to bomb their homes, dig up their graves, slaughter them like flies, and terrorize them. Well, Chief I mean, uh, ever since this government came in, the president had gone, uh, rallied Lake Chad Basin Commission. He approved $100 million. Uh, I think at that time, in June or thereabout, they released $21 million. He's got the support of all those in that commission. He's been to the African Union, getting support from uh, the West, as a matter of <laughs> fact. But now you hear people talk about the morale of the troops that is high. And everyone talks about providing that kind of leadership, which they say was lacking. So these are all that was geared towards ensuring that this fight continues. But reading perhaps uh, some of your text, there are many who will be under the impression that, well, this government is just buck passing and not folding their sleeves and picking up the gauntlet. Look, listen, I, um, the, the, problem, the problem here is this. You can't prosecute a war by propaganda. You say morale is high amongst the troops. We both know, or we all know, this is not true. We know the kind of things that our soldiers are going through. Their morale is low. 
Many of them are being killed without being celebrated. Many of them are not getting paid their salaries on time. Things are not easy. And I'm a great supporter and believer in the military. I've always been. I think they deserve a better deal. You spoke, you spoke about Chad Basin and money being spent here and there, and that they're making efforts, the president making efforts. Well, I wish it were all true. When this government came on board, or came into power, Chad, the Cameroonians, and Niger Republic were working with us to fight Boko Haram. Since President Buhari has taken power, the Chadians, who are a critical part of this fight against Boko Haram, have pulled out of this alliance. They, for, you know, for reasons best known to themselves, they have pulled out, and they're not helping us in this fight anymore. That is a cause for concern. What is it that President Buhari's government has done to put them in a position where they feel they have to put out? We cultivated them. Jonathan Mitchell cultivated them. Now we've lost a vital ally in the fight. So things are not that rosy. And I don't take any pleasure, and I do not delight in telling you this. I say this because I expect more from our government. I expect better from our president. And I recognize the fact that he was a great war hero during the time, of the, the time that we fought in Chad and he led our soldiers into Chad to repel the Chadians that had come into our territory uh, to kill our people. He did so well. This was in the early 80s. And I wonder why the same man is not in a position to prosecute a war today. Let me make this last point. Just the other day, a, a week or so ago, Cameroonian troops entered into Nigerian territory in the name of hot pursuit. They leveled a whole town in Borno State, killed about 70 of our citizens. The government did not even acknowledge this. Nothing was said about it. And no warning was given to Cameroonians, no, no reprisals, nothing. And I just don't think this is the sort of thing that we should be doing. The president has a duty to comfort our people, protect our people, fight the war, lead us from the front, tell us the truth, and get down to the job so that we can be proud of being Nigerians all over again. And by the way, he should, also, he should also get the local government areas that he lost. He should get them back quickly and clear the whole of Sambisa Forest. So what do we make of the command center moving to Borno State? Well, I don't think it's made any difference at all. I wish it did. You know, I, I think this is, you know, it's, this, this, this is a far more uh, sophisticated war than the, you, you can't determine the end of the war by where your command center is. But that's, that's a decision they made. And because all, you're talking you know, about, I'm all for it. The I'm most asking important you thing this. for me is the results. It's well, not. I'm asking you this because you say that, you know, the president should lead from the front. We've seen the army chiefs there over and over again, you know, leading their troops. In fact, we've heard that the chief of army staff leads his troops you know, in battle. And you talk about leading from the front. One will wonder, how do you reconcile the two? Well, the truth is this. It's the result that matters. It's not the strategy. I don't mind how they do it. Whether President Buhari moves his office in the villa to Maiduguri and rules the country from there in the name of trying to fight Boko Haram, if that's what it takes, let him do it. Or whether his chief of army staff works from there. Whatever it is, that's their decision. They are in power. It's their choice. What I'm concerned about is the, is the results or the results of their actions. Do you know we when... We must have results. It's all well and good to say... Do you know and, when and we're Chad, not seeing those results. Do you know when Chad pulled out of this alliance, as it were? Are you sure of the time that Chad pulled out of the alliance? Of course I'm sure of the time. Chad pulled out about, a, about what, about a month ago or so? Check the records. They've pulled out. They're not part of, they're not part of this alliance anymore. That's a sad development. I don't take any pleasure in that. I think it's wrong on their part. And by the way, I think, I think Chad has a lot of questions to answer. Why do you think so that I'm happened? So I'm not on the Chadian side. I, I'm a Nigerian. Why did that happen? Well, you have to put that to the Chadian president and to our president. But that's the fact. But, you know, obviously something must have gone wrong. And I think it's a tragedy. All right, Chief Ami Fanikade, uh, thank you very much indeed for talking to us today. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay, so there you have it. We'll uh, be back in just a moment. We'll have another perspective on um, some of the matters coming up this morning. Don't go away. <laughs>